Hello students. After the life history of Hermania 4 comes the life history of Hermania 5. And as you, you must be remembering that I have done the structure of uh, pre-branchial zone of uh, the pharynx of Hermania. And now we'll continue with the branchial zone or branchial sac. See the pharynx, it was divided into pre-branchial zone and the branchial sac. So I had done the detailed structure of pre-branchial zone. Now I'm coming to the branchial sac. The branchial sac, uh, if you see the internal view, now this is the diagram uh, which is uh, cut from the endostyle region. The end from the endostyle region, uh, there is a there is a cut made, and the pharynx is opened out, and here on the top lies the dorsal lamin so this this is the dorsal region and this is the ventral region and uh, you can see the clear view of the branchial zone this was the pre-branchial zone uh, having the dorsal tubercle on the top center region and uh, now we'll do the detailed structure of the branchial sac so as you can see on the in the middle or you may say that on the dorsal region the dorsal lamina is clear and if you see the detailed structure of dorsal lamina here in the uh, diagram below this is a part of dorsal lamina a is part of dor and b is one of the languages in section and as uh, we have done before the dorsal lamina has many languages hanging down below in the branchial zone and these languages they are helpful in passing the food from the, the whichever food is collected the you, uh, you know the direction of the water which is coming from here from the branchial aperture it is entering the pharynx the, so when it enters it goes into the ventral region and from the ventral region through these uh, bands the through the uh, longitudinal uh, folds the water it moves up towards the dorsal lamina and as it moves up the water uh, actually not the water the mucus which holds all the feeding material uh, from the water it gets stuck into the mucus and the mucus it runs up and here in this region the mucus holding all the fluid particles through the with the help of these languages it goes into the esophagus the mucus band is it is held by the languages and passed backwards into the opening of the esophagus so like this the feeding uh, the feeding uh, food and feeding will be doing in the end once again but i had just given you one idea of how it happens so if you look at the labelings this is the branchial aperture this is the branchial siphon branchial sphincter with all the tentacles and then this is the prebranchial zone having the dorsal tubercle and then this is the branchial zone which is having the branchial folds this is the cut edge of the endostyle here it is written and the this is the esophageal opening and this is the internal longitudinal vessel running along the dorsal lamina. So this is a view of the open pharynx from the inside it looks like this. And why is it looking like this? Because it is having the many stigma in the walls, in its walls. The prebranchial sac, it communicates to the atrial cavity through the stigma, stigmata. Uh, for this, uh, to understand this, we, have, we will have to look at this diagram. Uh, the, so this diagram, it is showing the four stigmatic areas in pharyngeal wall. Uh, you, now you can see these are the longitudinal vessels. Uh, this is the internal longitudinal vessel and then these are the interstigmatic vessels between the stigma all these black hole like structures are depicting the 
the stigmata and between these stigmata these are the interstigmatic this one this one this one these are all the interstigmatic vessels then this vessel is the intrastigmata between the stigmata will be inter and inside the stigmata is the intrastigma vessel and this is the transverse vessel this is one kind of transverse vessel and there is another kind of transverse vessel which is known as the external transverse vessel so this is the generalized uh, view of the stigmata in relation to all the vessels now here the stigmata area stigmatic area is enlarged and these are the stigmata as you can see they are large and there are cilia present on its wall on all the stigmata walls and this is the wall of the branchial sac and this is the transverse vessel this again is the transverse vessel the between the transverse vessels like see this is one transverse vessel this was the another and then all the stigmata are lying in between this so this is the enlarged view one transverse vessel second transverse vessel and in between all the stigmata are present and these this is the intrastigmatic passing through the stigmata and these are the interstigmatic vessels between the stigmata so i hope this is very be very clear over here so next i come to the endostylin ts in which the endostyl is shown very clearly if we uh, cut a transverse section of the pharynx the inside ventral area will look like this it is forming a groove like structure and on the ventral most part there are large cilia present and the or the inner lining of this ventral groove is lined by the ciliated epithelium and glandular epithelium there are blood many blood sinuses in the walls and the the long cilia are known as the median longitudinal cilia so this is the structure of the endostyle so this was the detailed structure of the branchial sac then we come to the uh, structure uh, which comes after the branchial sac and it is the esophagus and after the esophagus comes the stomach intestine rectum and cloaca and there is there are no specific structures present in these organs and so they are very simple and they are all tube like structures and only the lining inside them is a little different from each other so we will do about that okay, how does the lining look like in these structures before all this let's let me tell you about the esophagus now you can see the diagram over here this is esophagus in section uh, a1 and a, a a is esophagus in section and b is the starch granules and walls of esophagus stomach and liver these are the starch granules which are present in all these three uh, organs stomach liver and esophagus now let's see the diagram of esophagus this is the thick wall and uh, the uh, as the atrial siphon was guarded by four lips this also is having a uh, four lip like structure and there is a ciliated groove there are four ciliated grooves forming due to the uh, due, due to these four lip like structures and the, in the center is the lumen of the esophagus and the epithelium which is lining the esophagus is also ciliated epithelium now in this lower diagram you can see the gut epithelial lining cells and these are different in all the uh, elementary structures elementary digestive uh, elementary canal structures the stomach the lining is like this in the liver duct it is like this it is having cilia in the intestine it is like this and in the rectum it is like this so you can see the different formation of the 
epithelium of the different organs so this was all about the structure of the branchial sac and the uh, following structures like the esophagus stomach intestine rectum and this completes your elementary so thank you for now and the next chapter we will do the so digestive uh, glands and the food and feeding of herd money thank you